Hello, everyone. I'm Jill at Ingvid. And today we have, um, I think, a, a rather interesting different kind of session for you. And uh, you may have seen some of my interviews, uh, one to one or one to two. Uh, but this time, there are one, two, three, four, five of us. Uh, and we're all going to have a nice chat about books and reading. Um, so, and uh, to encourage you, our viewers, uh, if you don't already do any reading, particularly in English, uh, to encourage you to, to do that because it can help uh, with your language learning. And uh, also, I hope you read in your own native language too. Um, so, okay, so I'd like to start by introducing everyone. So I'm going to go on my screen, the order people are on my screen. Um, we have Anna, who is in Mexico. And uh, so Anna's first language, of course, is Spanish. Um, and Anna also has her own um, YouTube channel, which is called Butterfly Spanish. So anyone who is learning Spanish or would like to learn Spanish, do have a look at Anna's uh, channel called Butterfly Spanish. So welcome, Anna. Okay. Thank you. Hello. Thank you. Nice okay. Thank you. And then... Um, so then Alex um, from Canada, who also has his own YouTube channel because he's another Ingvid tutor uh, like me. So you've probably seen him already through Ingvid. So Alex also has his own YouTube channel. And some of his videos are on the subject of books and reading. So um, if you haven't already watched um, some of those, uh, do have a look over on Ingvid Alex. OK, so welcome, Alex. Thank you. Happy to be here. Okay. Thank you. OK, and then we have Alexandros, uh, right. who... Hi there, and who is from Greece originally, um, but I, I gather you're you're based in the UK, up in the northwest yeah. of the UK. So welcome, Alexandros. Thank you. Okay, and then also finally, but last but not least, uh, Felipe. Hi, Felipe. Welcome. And um, and so Felipe from Brazil originally, um, but also based in in the UK, in in London I think. So hi Felipe. Hello, hello. Thanks, thanks for being here. So thanks all of you for being here. That's great. So um, maybe if um, would somebody like to start by offering volunteering to uh, to hold up any any books you happen to have handy um, and um, just briefly uh, tell us maybe what you're reading at the moment or what you've read recently and and um, just to show a little selection so maybe Anna would you like to start and show us some some of the books you've got with you today yes of course um, I will I have them ready here um, and I have um, well I, I I'm going to show this one because this was one of the first books I read when I started speaking English in a more <laughs> normal or, or or when I became more confident speaking English and for me the, this this book is very important because it, it it was like a when I reached that threshold when I felt confident to to read in English more um, with, with more uh, with, with more confidence with understanding more so this is I Claudius by a British author Robert Graves so this was probably one of the first books I read in English 
and I, I, I still love it and go to it uh, often to, to, to enjoy it. Um, mm -hmm. um, I, in, in Spanish, I just recently, uh, I, I was reading this, um, that's how Maya, Mayans live, just because I'm in the region where the Mayan culture is, is the most important. So um, I was just trying to understand the way they lived and the way they ate and their traditions and everything like that's this is how the Mayans lived and this is a very um, let's say um, easy book because it's just an introduction so it doesn't get into a lot of detail but that's what I wanted I just wanted to know everything and well I'm learning French so I have my, <laughs> my two French books one my, my textbook <laughs> and I'm reading this but obviously I'm I don't speak French, so I am just going by page, you know, and by sentence, by paragraph. So this is, these are what, these are the books that I am currently having my hands on. <laughs> okay, that's great. So ha has anyone read maybe I, Claudius, or seen any sort of te television adaptation of the book? Um, I remember watching that when uh, it, it was first uh, on television in the 1970s. Um, it was a very popular series about the, the Roman emperors and Claudius in particular, and the emperors just before Claudius um, and the lead up to him becoming emperor. I think he was the most unlikely person to be a Roman emperor wasn't he? Because he had a terrible stutter. He couldn't speak very well. So he wasn't a very impressive sort of person, was he? But he, for some strange reason, he became emperor. Maybe nobody else was available at the time. So he stepped into the job. <laughs> I don't know. I, so, I think he was the only one left in, the, in, his, in his family. Uh, who survived mm -hmm. all the poisonings that were very normal. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, relatively <laughs> normal, yes. Nobody <laughs> him, right, by being quiet, no. and, you know. Pretty. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, so it's a very interesting book. So, okay, that's lovely. So um, perhaps um, Alex... Alex, would you like to just briefly tell us what, what books you have available there, where you are? Sure. Um, so first of all, I do have kids. So when we were planning this video, one of the things that you, know, you discussed is what is the most recent book you have finished? And for me, uh, the most recent book I read was last night. Uh, <laughs> the Pigeon Has to Go to School by Mo Willems. <laughs> so uh, honestly, like if you have children and you want them to learn English, uh, Mo Willems is a, is a fantastic writer. He does like kind of comic book style, like you can see here. And uh, his, his two most famous um, kind of characters or series are these pigeon books. So Mo Willems right here and the other most famous um, stories and characters that he has are uh, Piggy and Gerald. <laughs> so uh, there's Piggy the pig of course and Gerald the elephant and they have like you know long adventures. The vocabulary is relatively simple so even if you are a beginning English student uh, don't be ashamed to pick up like a, a children's book, for example, okay? So um, yeah, Mo Willems, uh, Piggy and Gerald, as well as the Pigeon books. He has a whole series of them. And as you can see here, he writes a ton. Um, he draws a ton. He's a great artist. And uh, yeah, so that's the most recent thing I've been reading. Personally, when I don't want to read uh, children's books, uh, I'm also really into Star Wars, as those of you who have watched my videos have probably figured out by now. Uh, so lately, I have been reading a lot of Star Wars novels. Uh, 
one of the ones I finished most recently is um, Ahsoka by E.K. Johnston. So right now, at the time of recording, uh, The Mandalorian is pretty big uh, on Disney Plus, for example, and Ahsoka shows up in season two. Um, this book, I would recommend it to uh, like upper intermediate English students. Um, it is a young adult fantasy novel or space fantasy, if you want to call it that. And uh, yeah, if you enjoy Star Wars, if you enjoy the Mandalorian, or if you enjoy the Ahsoka character, uh, this is a really strong novel by a Canadian author, uh, E.K. Johnston. She is also an excellent follow on Twitter. So <laughs> I recommend that. And um, I finished that one. And currently I am reading uh, Star Wars Catalyst, a Rogue One novel by James Luceno. It's probably backwards in the video, but that's okay. Um, and if you enjoyed the Rogue One movie, this is a prequel to the movie. And uh, this one I really recommend only for advanced learners of English. Um, and you have to be a Star Wars fan kind of to enjoy this one because it, it goes into, uh, you know, history, background details. Uh, so if you, are, if you do enjoy Star Wars or if you enjoyed the Rogue One movie, uh, Catalyst by James Luceno is an excellent uh, prequel. Well, so far, you can see how far I am. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it's, uh, yeah, that's what I've been reading lately. A lot of Star Wars books. It's not the only thing I read, but uh, with The Mandalorian getting me excited lately, that's what I have been reading. Great. That's lovely. Thanks, Alex. So I guess you're, you're a keen sci-fi science fiction which gets abbreviated to sci-fi uh you're a fan of the sci-fi type of book um and i guess so i mean do people uh, watch the films is everyone uh, are you all star wars fans of the films you yeah. won't hurt my feelings if you're not it's okay like <laughs> oh and and uh, did, did i i you, am a fan. I, I watch the Mandalorian, mm -hmm. but I don't read. I'm a fan of the movies and the Mandalorian, but I don't. I haven't read anything about it. Mm -hmm. I okay. Personally, okay. thank you, Alex, for your suggestion. And, no and problem. Alexandro, Alexandros and Felipe, are you are you Star Wars fans or sci-fi fans at all? Not the first preference. But I would like okay. to start read some of them, maybe. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and Felipe, are you a sci-fi fan at all, or do you watch the films? Yeah, it's the same for me. It's not my first preference, but uh, I'm tr I'm uh, starting to explore it a bit now. But I I didn't start with the Star Wars. I'm starting with uh, some other stuff. <laughs> Okay, okay, that's great. So, right, so Alexandros then, would, would you like to just show us your selection of books? Yeah, I don't know from where to start, but okay. So the first one, uh, it's Rumi. Uh, he's, he was a Persian uh, poet. Uh, he was a mystic philosopher. I like I don't know, I like a lot his poetry. I feel uh, he, he gives me some enlightenment. I don't know, it's difficult to express. I think poetry is something personal, so... Sorry, it's my first video, so <laughs> it's oh, difficult No, no, to... it's fine. No, I'm, I'm just thinking poetry. Yeah. We're very keen on poetry. I, I have a few videos on Ingvid about poems, so I'm yeah. very glad that you've brought a, a, a poetry book there. So uh, do you like poetry generally as a, as a type of literature? Um, um, I, for, for me... Uh, poetry, uh, I think it's um, it's hard to explain, but I think I'm not mature enough yet. So uh, mm. 
I need some time, but I think I need more maturity to get into. So it's hard. It's hard to explain, but I think I'm not ready. Sometimes I read because I used to live more. I used to read more philosophical books. So for me, it was easier to transit from uh, mm -hmm. to poetry. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's good because uh, poetry can be quite difficult to understand is, is, as well because of the way it's written. The style of it can be, you know, you have to work at it sometimes to understand what the poet is saying. So there's yeah. that. It's quite a challenge, isn't it? Sometimes this, this is the reason. I'm not yet to poetry. It's very challenging mm -hmm. because it's something very personal, what you have inside you. So mm -hmm. it's difficult to understand. So yes. anyway. Yes. Oh, that's good. Uh, Lovely. And something else you have there? Yeah, yeah. The second, because I'm Greek, <laughs> in a way like Aristotle, uh, mm -hmm. this is the Nicomachean Ethics. Um, this book is about uh, happiness in a way. In a, philosoph sorry, in a philosophical way, um, mm. it helps you, it, exp it, it explains you in a way how to be happy through the um, way of virtues. Uh, sorry, I feel a bit stressed, so it's difficult to express no, worry, myself. No. Usually, um, usually I, I can talk more, but I feel that my mind is stuck. So I will no, not don't. say a lot about a books <laughs> because it's my first no, that's, video. That's fine. Again, philosophy, you, you've chosen the really difficult subjects, poetry, philosophy. They are very hard to talk about, I think. Um, you need um, more space fantasy in your life. It's easier to talk about just like swords and fights. That's what you <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I have one book that is fiction. So it is the next one. It's Anna Karenina, Leo, Tol Leo Tolstoy. Mm -hmm. um, before this book, I was lost in relationships. And I think through all these 1,000 pages, I think, I think it helped me to know what I know. I mean, I definitely recommend it. And the others, of course. But it helped me to know what... I'm looking for in a way. And I, I, like I like that. the I like a lot I the end. That. Sorry. So I was I was going to say I like the way you said it helped you to know what you know. Yeah. Because I, I think that's reading novels, it often sort of confirms things in, in your own mind about yeah. what you know about life and human beings and how people behave. Um, I think that's a very uh, sort of deep um, thing that you said just then. It, it helped you to know what you know. Uh, I think that's a very interesting way of putting it. So, uh, ca sorry, carry on. Carry, I just yeah, wanted and, to comment on that. And the end even surprised me because it finished with a sense of good. I was surprised, but I, it was very, again, philosophical in a way because it's tall story. Mm -hmm. So the last book I would like to talk is from a Chinese philosopher. Sorry about that, but <laughs> I have them. <laughs> Sorry about that. So <laughs> this is Chuan Chung. Uh, it's called Inner, Inner Chapters. Um, it's about Taoism. And uh, I like the way of the construction of the book, what I mean. Mm -hmm. It has picked. It has. Um, it has picked the Chinese letters. I don't know how to read Chinese. It has also nice pictures and small text. So uh, it's it's humorous. I mean, it's very deep and at the same very humorous. I mean, he give very humorous examples to understand about uh, personal growth, about what is very important in our lives. And I like that. <laughs> I like the humorous way to say, to speak and, about and great it, ideas. And, and the, the design is lovely because usually if you yeah. get a book of philosophy, it's yeah, like, like, like Aristotle. <laughs> 
plankton. Yes. Oh. <laughs> so to have to have some pictures, it, it's always nice to have some pictures in a book. I think it breaks yeah, up yeah, the yeah. text. It helps a lot for the understanding. I mean, everything is carefully chosen. I mean, either the picture, I mean, uh, so it has some titles like um, Happy Wandering, The Quality of All Things, The Secret of Growth, Human Affairs, Signs of Full Virtue, The Great Master, The Saking. For the first one is Happy Wandering with this guy. So, I mean, it helps a lot, the pictures. That's nice. And even having the Chinese lettering yeah, 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 yeah. as well, it sort of puts you in touch with the, the culture, doesn't it, yeah. to see the different style of writing. So that's great. Lovely. Many thanks, Alexandros. Thank it's a very interesting selection. Thank you. So, so Felipe, would you like to show us your, your choice of books for today? Yeah, I will show you. Uh, first, I'll show you the book I am currently reading. Uh, as um, uh, you, you will know, I like uh, English literature. So yes. I'm reading now Pride and Prejudice. Wow. So, yeah. Uh, and uh, um, this is the one I am reading now. Um, Another one that is English and is one of my favorite books is uh, it's not exactly science fiction, but it's a dystopian uh, fiction. And I think that's the genre I prefer, maybe. And this one is uh, Clockwork Orange. Mm -hmm. <laughs> one of my favorites ever. Um, Usually I prefer fiction, but I read this one that is a non-fiction book um, called In Cold Blood yes. by Truman Capote. And uh, it's really good. I really recommend this one. It's really good. And uh, one in my own language uh, by uh, José Saramago, the Portuguese writer called, uh, I don't know the name of this book in English, I'm so sorry. It's, uh, I think it's the, it's, uh, it's the version of Jesus Christ about his own, uh, about the Old Testament. It, no, not, not the Old Testament, the, the New Testament. It's his own perspective about it. Oh, so that would be perhaps the gospel according to. Yes, Jesus. that's the one, yeah. This one is also really good, yeah, really, really good book. And uh, even uh, even in Portuguese, is uh, quite difficult to read, you know, because uh, Saramago has a very particular style. But if you have a chance to read um, uh, it in English, uh, I recommend it. <laughs> wow, that's a really interesting selection. Of course, the Pride and Prejudice, Jane Austen, uh, English novelist. That's quite hard, uh, hard to read. It, it's very humorous, I think. It but is humorous, very subtle, yeah. Very subtle humor, isn't yeah. it? So, um, has has anyone else read any uh, Jane Austen novels at all? Only in university. Uh, <laughs> I have uh, North Anger Abbey on my bookshelf downstairs. Um, I find the writing style is still very readable, um, you know, even in, in today's uh, century. <laughs> um, and yeah, I, you know, I enjoyed the book. Uh, I haven't read Pride and Prejudice. I've, of course, heard all the praise that it has gotten. I'm sure there's a reason it's a classic. Um, but yeah, I, I remember reading North Anger Abbey in university and I bought the book again um, because I remember enjoying it in university. So it's sitting on my ever expanding bookshelf downstairs. Aha. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh -huh. and, and also, of course, Pride and Prejudice has been made into a film, well, several film versions, have, hasn't it? And uh, TV series, I think, as well. And Clockwork Orange is another one which was made into a film 
I think in the 1960s, Felipe, can you remind me, 1960s or 70s, there was a film made of the a Clockwork Orange? Yeah, I, don't, I, I, I can't remember exactly when, but yeah, it was somewhere in the 60s mm. or 70s. And uh, I watched the film first and then I went to the novel, yeah. Because when the film was first made, I think it was banned. You know, it wasn't allowed to be shown. It wasn't just an X film. It's uh, very violent. An X film in this country for adults only, but it was so violent that they they wouldn't show it at all at any yeah. cinema in in the UK anyway. So yeah. um, I don't know if the violence comes across a lot in the the book itself. Does it seem quite it does, violent? Yeah. Reading it does. It, 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 it's very, it's very humorous as well, you know. Uh, and, and even when he's describing the, because it's, uh, it's uh, the main character. This uh, he, he is narrating the story, and uh, even he, when he's describing the violent scenes, it, it, it comes across very humorous in a way. So it's like a contradiction. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And then In Cold Blood, which you said is a true story, I, I've read that one myself, and uh, it's, it's so detailed, isn't it? It's about a crime that's committed by two men. And uh, the detail, it, it's very sort of like a journalist yeah. telling the story in a way, isn't it? Because he goes into all the detail. I don't know if anyone else has read it, In Cold Blood by Truman. Capote. It's uh, it's so well written, but it's also horrible because of the crime. You know, just a, an unnecessary crime that mm. you can't even understand why. Why did they commit that crime? What what was the reason? It was just so random. You know, and it's also a very uh, it's a very uh, gripping uh, book because mm. once you start reading, you can't put it aside. You just have to finish it. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So, so that's great. Thank you. That's a great selection there. Very interesting. Okay, so I think perhaps if we could then have a, a, a chat between ourselves um, about the, your preferred type of book. Maybe you've already said, but whether you like a history book or fiction or travel, biography, uh, science fiction, perhaps, for Alex. But do, would anyone like to say anything uh, about the, your particular uh, preferred type of book? Well, I'd Anna? say something. Um, I, I think um, one of the things that Alexandro said is that he likes the the enlightenment that some of the, the philosophy books uh, gives him. And I think that is, uh, that is something I, I, I really enjoy from uh, philosophy books and, and also poetry that it's so personal. For me though, um, one of the things I like the most, reading the most is uh, historical fiction. Uh, that's how I started reading I Claudius because I like historical fiction in, in Spanish and in English too. Um, and, and one of the things I would like to say is that I like historical fiction because, well, I like history, but also because historical fiction teaches me from a different period. So for me, reading is kind of escaping my time <laughs> and, and just move to a different time and period and, and to know more about the traditions and, and customs and all that. And, and maybe less about uh, learning about my own world, my the, the world I live in. Um, that, that's what I like, uh, historical fiction. And um, yes, uh, basically that's, that's, that's what I wanted to say, that that's one of the books uh, of what I talk about. Thank you. Yes, I think it's fascinating because you, you see people in a different period in history, maybe in a different country as well from the country you're in. But uh, you can see how people have to, I always think people have to live within 
whatever situation they're in, you know, and things were different in the past. So if people say, for example, why didn't women stand up for themselves more, you know, 200 years ago, uh, I think it must have been really difficult. Uh, whereas now, you know, say in the UK or North America or, or wherever, you know, women, it's sort of more, there is more equality, although there's still, I think, uh, there are difficulties still. But, you know, to look at someone in a really um, a different culture altogether and an earlier period in history and you start to understand what the difficulties were, how to survive and how to exist within that the structure that you find yourself in, you know, it, it sort of um, gives you more of an insight, I think. Um, so, and, and does anyone want to add to that or comment on you know, reading about people in a different country or a different period in history. Um, so, I can follow okay. up a little yes. bit. Um, yes, yeah, thank you. So, you know, I know Alexandros was talking about reading books on philosophy and you, you mentioned Aristotle. Um, I don't want to say I only read science fiction. Like, I think there's a, a slight image of me, maybe from my own <laughs> fault, <laughs> that I only push like Star Wars, science fiction, fantasy. Um, I actually really love philosophy. And one of the, this, this book is always in my bathroom, to be quite honest with you. Uh, so uh, my camera doesn't show it very well. It's uh, the, the Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. Um, and it looks at Stoic philosophy, uh, what are the best ways to live? Uh, it also talks about, you know, the virtues that we should try to be good and do good, not because of the praise that we get for it, but because good for good sake, basically. Uh, and I think Aristotle repeats some of this as well. So, um, you know, I, I very much enjoy um, you know, introspective books, uh, such as, you know, Meditations by Marcus Aurelius, uh, or philosophy books, um, some poetry, um, but really, I like escaping into fiction, um, because number one, science fiction, it's about what is possible, right? So I, I look at science fiction as the fiction of the possible, um, Star Wars doesn't fit into that so much. It, Star Wars is more so about escapism and it does look at morality in a very kind of binary way, right? There, there's the good side and there's the bad side. It gets more complex than that in the middle. And I think it lines up quite well actually with, uh, with philosoph philosophical books, which look at, you know, how do you judge an action to be correct? How do you know that something is right? Is it the consequence of the action? Is it the intention of the action? Um, you know, does your intention matter at all? So I think um, there is some of that in Star Wars as well. So that, I think that's why those two things mesh well for me, um, because you can see philosophy in fiction. Once you have a framework to work from, like when you have... Uh, like a Marcus Aurelius or an Aristotle, you can start seeing that in other stories, uh, whether fictional stories or nonfiction stories. So um, when it comes to, you know, historical fiction, I can't think off the top of my head, uh, the last historical fiction novel I've read, I'm sure I've read them. Um, but yes, books have definitely helped to expand my, my worldview uh, have taken me to other places. Um, a lot of stuff like even fantasy novels, like one of my favorite fantasy authors is Neil Gaiman. Um, one of the books I finished last year, uh, The Ocean at the End of the Lane. It's a very short novel. It's only like a less than, yeah, just over 200 pages. Um, and it is a fantasy novel. It's about a, a middle-aged man who goes back to the town where he grew up uh, for a funeral, 
but it has fantastic elements to it. But it talks about like, you know, how we remember uh, the nature of memory, um, the, the horrible things that happened to you in childhood and trauma and how you process them as an adult, or in some cases don't process them. And then it becomes a, an issue for you. So like fantasy, there is an optimism to it. Um, and it also, it, it's, a, it's a vehicle for exploring very real human concerns, uh, very real human issues and problems. So uh, for that reason, I mean, I, I love escaping into fantasy because you get like magical worlds and fairies and weird stuff while also exploring very real very human issues. I think some people are maybe a bit prejudiced against reading books or prejudiced against reading fiction because they say, well, it's not real. They're not real people. But the, the thing is that they're kind of representative types of people, characters who, you know, do things and say things. They make decisions whether to do a good thing or a bad thing. And you, you then think about, their motivation, why did they do that? What were the consequences? And then you see a whole story unfolding and you might think then about yourself, would I, oh, I wouldn't do that, you know. Um, I can see what the consequences would be of doing that bad thing, so I would never do that, you know. But then someone in a book does a good thing and good things come from it, and you and you sort of admire them for it, and you know there's a lot of a sort of learning of how to behave, and you know the best way to live your life through fiction, uh, as well as philosophy and and poetry, which has a lot of usually a lot of feeling, emotion in it, uh, going very deeply into the person's psychology, perhaps, and you know, how they feel about something that's happened to them and so on. So I think books are, you know, amazing, really, how you can learn so much from them, perhaps unexpectedly sometimes. Um, so, OK, so maybe now we could sort of go back to, like your book that you just mentioned, Alex, where the man goes back to where he came from. Uh, if we go back to sort of childhood days and whether anyone, uh, do you remember learning to read as a child, the books you had at home, books you read at school, uh, any particular teacher who perhaps inspired you? Uh, whether you joined your, if you had a local library, would anyone like to talk about what memories of Alexandros? Do you want to say something about your early days? Yeah, well, when, when I was young, uh, it was difficult for me to read books. It was really difficult. I couldn't read either two sentences. And then, I, I, but I used to like, I like uh, science, to read science books about biology. I was very, in a way, into that. But when I was 16 years old, uh, for a reason I had, uh, I started reading, I mean, someone talking about Plato, another, so Plato make me, uh, I mean, not, this, not exactly this one, but because I read it in, in Greek, but this is a good uh, translation, Lev is from Harvard, so, and, I start looking in, I mean, non-fiction make me read all the other things and give me a meaning in my life. And I, I don't know, it gave me a purpose. It helped me to be a better person and to, and I haven't resolved all the conflicts, but it helped when I'm reading about, a reason, a reason I like philosophy is because it creates me a stability, a mental stability. So it protects me. It's like a silt. So, and all, also it makes me open-minded to accept other ideas. I mean, either some philosophers that don't like poetry, they don't like about fic fiction. I don't know, when I'm reading philosophy, it gives me a lot of inspiration to write poems, to, to, to create art. I mean, it's, I don't know, it opened my mind, it opened my horizons. Uh, I don't know. So, yeah, this is, Plato... Sorry, sorry. <laughs> 
Uh, this is this is where I disagree with Marcus Aurelius because he he says don't waste your time reading like beautiful letters or writing <laughs> wonderful poems. Um, focus on what you need to do. Like it's a very practical philosophy for life, but that's the one area where I say, no, no, no. I'm also going to enjoy reading beautiful poetry and reading beautiful letters as well. I, I, I agree, but some Marcos Avrilos was one of my fedor, favorite philosophers, and this edition is the best. I think this is the best English translation of Marcos Avrilos. Uh, but I think somewhere it says that you can find beauty even in ugly things. So I don't. Sometimes we paraphrase things, and I think Stoic philosophy uh, can guide you to be, you know to be more strict, to be like a rock, but I don't think they want something like that. I mean, stoicism is about accepting what you have. And of, of course I know what you mean, but there are some passages in Marcos Aurelius that they discover beauty, they rediscover, rediscover beauty. I mean, in ugly things, or it says somewhere about, you know, what we like about bread is that in some points, you, you remember that passage, yes, I think yes, it's in of the- course. In the fourth book of him, in, uh, in maybe in the f- five, I don't remember exactly, but it says we like bread because in some points it become, you know, this, it, you know what I mean. It the way make, it, like, it breaks open in the oven and he talks about like the, um, the spit of the lion or like he's like. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so <laughs> he's not about, he doesn't like poetry. Of course, it's difficult to explain, <laughs> but... Yeah, there are con- I think there's a contradiction there because I remember yeah. I take notes in this book like with pencil and I say, doesn't this contradict what he said before a little bit? But, um, you know, everybody does contradictions sometimes, but I, mm. I also, you know, I do think, like you said, it's about accepting reality the way it is um, and giving you the mental tools, the mental skills to deal with it and deal with yeah. it in a good way and to not um, become a slave to your passions yeah. or yeah. to your immediate reaction, right? To anger and to lust and to greed and to kind of um, control those, be, be aware of them. Uh, but sorry, before I interrupted you, you were talking about Plato uh, and number one, very brave. 16 years old reading Plato. Good job. <laughs> Something else. The book that, really sorry, the book that you suggested, I think is one of the best to start reading philosophy. He has, you know, he has philosophy. He goes a diary actually. And he goes, you have one sentence, one paragraph. It's easy to digest. It's the way he writes is very simple. So I, if someone asked me, to recommend one of these books, I recommend I will recommend yours because I think in 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 the world they say that Buddhism and uh, the way that Marcus Aurelius uh, expressed his hi- hi- philosophical thoughts are the most practical. I mean, if you are looking for something practical, very practical, and you are you just starting reading philosophy, I will recommend the the book you saw definitely, definitely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Only that to add. I mean, yeah, no, um, like the, the passages, like you said, are very short. So if someone is interested, you know, in reading a philosophical book, I mean, you can see the passages are incredibly short in some cases. It's like one sentence, two sentences, but it gives you something you can think about uh, for a long time. Yeah. Like even basic stuff, you know, he says, um, you could be good today but instead you choose tomorrow. And he's saying, don't wait, right? Like start now, Um, don't waste your time. Like you're, one of the things about stoicism is it talks about the acceptance of death. Like everyone dies, stop wasting your time. You are here for, you know, the life of a candle, basically. That's that's all you're here for. So uh, don't waste your time, start living today. Um, So it gives you very practical advice, you're right. Mm-hmm. I just want uh, to, yeah. I just wanted to comment on something that um, it must be a real pleasure. And Alexandros, I feel you're so fortunate to be reading 
the Greek philosophers in Greek <laughs> because I, most of us read translations and, you know, we get what we can get, some good translations maybe, but something, maybe some other translations that are not so accurate. So it, it must be a, a real pleasure to read the Greeks in Greek. So that's, that's all I wanted to say, Alexandros, to you. Paradoxically, if you want to read Aristotle, I think this edition, Leb, I don't know if you can see, it's are the best, I mean, either from some Greek, I mean, we don't have good translations from ancient Greek to Greek, so sometimes I think it's better to, I mean, some, I mean, some people, they do a better job, I think, especially this uh, library, not for every author, but for Aristotle, I understand, I understood more when I read Metaphysics. I mean, he wrote a book about Metaphysics, you know, from this edition than from the Greek. So it's not always like that. I mean, depends who translate. But oh, I think you're learning, like, if, if you're reading it in Greek, even if it's a newer Greek in the older, you know, I think the connection is, more direct than when, when I'm reading it in Spanish, for example, or, or yeah. English. For example, like for me, philosophy, for me, it's still very hard to read it in English. Like I have to read it in Spanish. That's for yeah, philosophy. Yeah, yeah. Start with that one. I think it's the best to start. I mean, in my personal opinion, of course, I think it's very easy and practical and very short. So you go Aristotle, he is very good in discovering happiness. I prefer it from Marcus Aurelius. It gave me more insight. Well, you know, but it's better. I mean, the other one. But you know, this is long. Can be ten pages, five. I don't know, five paragraphs. Conclude. Marcus Aurelius, Chuck, just in a sentence, just in a paragraph. No, there, there <laughs> I, is no complex logic in Aurelius. <laughs> I mean, like, not to say that ideas are not complex, because they can be, but um, like you said, like Aristotle or following Plato, like you have to be very focused because you're following um, sentence after sentence and saying, if we accept this, then we accept this. If we accept these two things, then we must accept that. So there is like more of a logical flow, I think, uh, based on what I remember, uh, I haven't read Plato in a couple of years, but uh, that's what I remember from it anyway. <laughs> okay. Oh, well, that's fascinating. That's really interesting about whether to read a writer in, in the, the, the language that they originally wrote in or whether it's, you know, interpreted it differently in a different language. So especially the difference between ancient Greek and modern Greek, I guess, there's enough of a difference, perhaps, to make it difficult to read in ancient Greek. Is that right, Alexandros? It's very difficult to understand from the ancient Greek because the grammar, the grammar is more difficult. I think I can't, I can't read in the ancient Greek. So I have the books are, you know, you have the ancient text, and after that you have the modern. It's, it's, I mean, I know words because we use a lot of words, but you know, it's language is not about words, about the grammar, it's about other stuff. It, it needs to have yeah, a to, flow. Yeah. It needs to have a flow, yeah. not to yeah. be like, it, you know. It's about how the words are put together, isn't yeah, it? And why, 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 why he chose to have these words? So it's become very complicated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, going back in English, you know, Old English, Anglo-Saxon yes. is almost impossible for a modern English person to read unless they've studied it as a as a foreign language, <laughs> basically. So, OK, so maybe we could move on now to another question. And we've all been looking at physical books. But what about the other ways of reading a book, such as, um, you know, an e-book, uh, Kindle? Um, um, an audio book where you, you just listen to the book, somebody's recorded it, an actor or someone has done a, an audio book recording, or you can get the free 
ebooks from uh, there's gutenberg.org on the internet and there's bartleby.com is another one where you can download free ebooks so what what are people's uh, maybe felipe do you want to say what's your preferred way of reading a book uh yeah i prefer uh physical books yeah mm -hmm. uh, i used to have a kindle before but mm -hmm. it broke and then i decided not to buy a, a new one anymore well it was a present so i decided not mm -hmm. to get a new one anymore what well, one thing i liked about kindle is that when you were reading you could check uh the meaning of the word if you didn't know the word you know automatically uh, w with these ones, sometimes it's more difficult. You just have to keep reading. And then at some point, you even forgot about what was the word that I didn't understand. And then you go back some pages and you can't find the word anymore. And that thing keeps bugging you. But I, still, I prefer a physical book. Sometimes I'm uh, reading and I'm with my mobile and then I see the word I don't know and then I check. Uh, and sometimes I try not to do that because also I think that um, that uh, that stops the natural flow of the reading too. So sometimes I accept that I don't know that word. It's fine. So if that word shows up again in the text, maybe I'll check it or maybe I'll, I'll keep reading and see if I can get the, the meaning myself. But I decided not to interrupt my reading so much because of that. But mm -hmm. yeah, definitely physical books. <laughs> cool. Yes. What, what about other other people? Do you have a preference or a, a good alternative to reading a physical book? Um, Anna, maybe. Anna, do you yeah. want to say? Um, well, I I prefer physical books. Certainly, I like the book on my hands and move the pages and go back as, as Felipe was saying. But one of the things that I, I think is very helpful for learning a new language is to use, I have the idea that to use everything you can in order to, to learn the language. So something I find um, fascinating with these audio books and the books that you can actually, um, hear it and read it and start making sense of some of the words and, and understanding. So though, even though I prefer the physical book, I, I do recommend sometimes my students to, to download some free audio books and sometimes to even see the PDF and follow the text because I feel that that, oh, that targets both reading comprehension, read the, the words in, in a sentence, in a context, but also to to understand. And for me, one of the challenges in English was understanding. Like I could read, I could spell words, but understanding was a huge challenge. So audiobooks mm -hmm. were hu a huge help. Mm -hmm. like hearing. Uh -huh. Yes, yeah. Yes, I guess for anyone learning a language, you know, that they've got the double thing going on. They might be reading a book for the pleasure of reading it, but if it's in the language that they're currently learning, anyone reading a book in English who's learning English as a foreign language, uh, the, the sound of the language is very important too, isn't it, to know how the words are pronounced and to get the sort of sense of the intonation, the flow, mm -hmm. the phrasing of how a sentence is spoken. Uh, so uh, you're right that anyone learning a language and reading a book to help them to get to, to know the language better, the, the audio side of it is of course very important. Um, and. Um, I think, uh, Alex, you were talking to me a while back about audio books you, yourself as well and uh, different ways of getting hold of audio books. Do you want to sort of say something about that? Sure. I really enjoy the experience, especially when I am doing house chores. Uh, honestly, like washing the dishes, uh, I put on a fiction book or a nonfiction book and just 
listen to something interesting mm -hmm. so that you're not just, you know, focusing on washing dishes or folding laundry or vacuuming the house or cutting the grass or whatever you're doing. Um, so I think it depends on um, like what kind of mood I'm in in terms of preference or what I'm doing. I mean, I can't read a physical book while I am washing the dishes. So at least I can listen to one at the same time. Uh, I've even, you know, one of the, the audiobooks that I love uh, is the Lord of the Rings, uh, Fellowship of the Ring um, audiobook read by Robert Inglis. Um, obviously, this is the physical book of uh, J.R.R. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings. Um, but that one, I remember going to work, and I think it took me about three weeks. I would listen and sometimes I would listen and read at the same time. I don't know why, but I enjoyed the process <laughs> of like seeing the words, but having someone else read it to me at the same time. Um, so yeah, I think audiobooks are an excellent way, you know, to of course, listen to pronunciation, uh, to help you with comprehension, like listening comprehension. Um, and because of those two reasons, those two of many other reasons, um, I think they can be a good way to help you learn another language or to practice or at least become more familiar with another language. Um, yeah, my preferred method is still physical books. Uh, I love going to used bookstores uh, in particular. Um, anytime I go on vacation, <laughs> uh, the first thing or one of the first things I look for is, okay, where is a used bookstore? Just, I love the, the smell. I love seeing what I can discover. Sometimes you find stuff that's like 40 years old or 50 years old. And there's something special about that. I mean, when you think about it, like reading, it's a type of time travel. <laughs> it can be like a type of time travel. Uh, the, these words that someone wrote like 40 years ago are now sitting in your hands. That's pretty amazing. Uh, you know, we talk about development and technology, but writing, like writing is just an amazing, amazing uh, invention. <laughs> so it allows us to do that. Uh, but yes, I, I love both. Uh, I love audiobooks. Uh, my preferred method is still the physical book, if I can sit down and read it in my bed or on the couch. Um, Ebooks, I have read two books on my phone, <laughs> uh, on an iPhone actually, uh, on a pretty small phone. So uh, I have a Kindle. I haven't used it yet though. Um, but I think in the future, once my bookshelf cannot take any more books, uh, I will need to probably buy a Kindle as well and, you know, make the next step. Yeah, that, that's one thing that the electronic version of a book doesn't take up so much space, does it? The physical books take up a lot of space. And also, if you're traveling anywhere or just going somewhere on the train for the day or whatever, um, it's sometimes more convenient to have the, the e-book on your tablet or whatever or an audio book to listen to if you're traveling you don't want to be carrying lots of books with you but uh, I guess if you're if you're going off for the day if you're traveling to work or something I think Felipe you've told me um, you know often when you're traveling to work you tend to read a book on, on the bus on, on the way to work is that right did, did I remember that uh, right, Felipe. Yeah, that's right. I, I, I go to work. Uh, well, when I was going to work, uh, now I'm working yes. from home. <laughs> but yeah, when I was going to work, pandemic. yeah, <laughs> uh, yes. I was getting the bus. Uh, and uh, uh, with the bus, I take about 40 minutes to one hour, depending on the traffic, uh, door to door. And uh, yeah, I was always reading my book on the way to work and then on the way back home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and you could usually get a seat on the bus, hopefully, so you could sit comfortably and read. You wouldn't have to be standing up and no, holding no, no, no. on to something and your book in the other hand. So you Always could be sit sitting on the upper deck. <laughs> Ah, okay. So with a nice view out of the window yeah. as well. Then. Yeah. <laughs> of London passing by. Yes. I didn't oh. even see outside. I was with my eyes on the book. Ah, okay. <laughs> okay. 
great, lovely. Mm -hmm. and, and so, and would you say, Felipe, that, you know, reading books in English, ha has that helped you to expand your vocabulary and, and get to know the English language better and better? Yeah, a lot, because uh, when uh, I, I came to London 16 years ago, and uh, I never read books in English when I was in Brazil. I started reading books in English here, you know, and uh, not from the start, after a while, because I didn't feel confident to, to read in English. So mm. uh, after a while, I decided to face reading a book in a foreign language. And uh, with time, it became easier. Yeah, now it's it's much easier, of course. But if you if you if you break this first barrier, you know, it, it goes easier, and uh, definitely it helps you a lot to improve your vocabulary. Yeah. Yes, yes. It's just making a start, isn't it? Thinking, yeah. oh, I couldn't read that book in in French or Portuguese. Yeah. Well, for me, I I think I've read one whole book. No, probably more. A few books in French, which is my second language. Uh, I think one book in Portuguese, which is my third language, but it was a very thin book. Uh, so it didn't have that many pages. But I feel I, you know, I ought to do a bit more of that. Um, you have you, 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 to read more. You also forget that when you read books in your own language, like when I read books in Portuguese, many times you're going to read some sentences or paragraphs that you're going to have to reread it again because you didn't understand quite well. You're going to have to go back some pages to make sense of the story. And uh, when you are reading in a foreign language, you think that is difficult because you're reading reading in a foreign language, but sometimes reading in your own language, it's also challenging in a way. So people, uh, they shouldn't feel put off because of that. No, no. And, and that's why it's nice to have the physical book because you can go back a few pages quickly, can't you? And you can mark things, you know, on the page, put a little question mark in the margin or something and then go back to it. So yeah. that's the other advantage of a physical book. Um, yeah. So, um, so, what about you, Alexandros? Have you found that reading books in English has has helped you expand your knowledge of English and how words and phrases are put together and the actual vocabulary? Yeah, it's. I mean, I I saw. I found that I had the real progress when I started reading books and especially when I'm hearing audiobooks. Although I'm not an acoustic type as a person, it helps me a lot when I'm hearing, I mean, I don't know, BBC 4 or I'm hearing a book. It helps me a lot to speak more naturally. And I, 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 I definitely saw an improvement. Previously, I left because I was looking for the Kindle. I think... Yeah, for this reason, I, I, I was looking everywhere. So it's, it, I think it's a great invention because especially when you go for vacations, you don't need to, to have with you <laughs> all, I mean, 100 books. I want to read that, I want to read that, I want to read that. Finally, you don't read, maybe. But you have them all in this, you know, amazing technology. Mm. I mean, mm. it, they, it fits thousands of books. Uh, so it's easy I think if someone wants to buy a Kindle I think the best is to buy the simple one you see there is no light it's like it's like a book if you see it's 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 like a book so because if you have light I mean it has light or it's, if it's um, you know an iPhone or whatever a phone it's not good for the eye because after a long time you you feel that you are tired so mm -hmm. I think depends what you want to read. Maybe you enjoy more as an audiobook, like a poetry. Poetry, you need to hear it. You need to see the flow. Or mm -hmm. if you go, I mean, I, I read recently, I read a book. I mean, I heard a book uh, about mythology, but the type of um, the, the author was a bit uh, humorous you know, and has a humor. So you can feel it when you read a book. Or I, I, I heard the Iliad. Do you know Iliad of Homer? Mm. 
Odyssey and Iliad. So it's better when you hear it, not when you read it. If you want to catch the meaning, if you want to be there, all these forces, all these fights, all this, you know, action, you need to hear it. Because in the past, people were uh, singing and playing instruments and saying the story of all these heroes. Mm -hmm. Personally, I prefer to, to read the physical book on the top because I like, when I'm reading, I like to be active. I want to be there. I want to keep notes. I want to make the book, you know, to write, to do the pages, to smell the book. And of course, I love what you referred in the beginning. I, I have a lot of secondhand um, books, a lot, a lot. Most of my books are secondhand. And I, I love it. I mean, and I think if someone wants to improve his English, of course, it's good to read books. But I think when you, you read the book, I think it's something more than phrases, more than, you know, more than words. It's it, because it, it's, it's lively. It, it expands your horizons, like the philosophy I referred earlier. It has part of the consciousness of an author. So if you want to meet someone when you read, you, you, he is still alive. He's here with you. I mean, Plato is here with us. I mean, if you read the law, in the beginning, it will be difficult. It's like when you meet a friend. In the beginning, you don't know what he is talking about. But when he, he will be your friend, then you know what he's talking about. I mean, I mean, you want you read a lot of books from him. I think for mm. this is, mm. I found books are, are great for this reason of the consciousness. Mm. Part of their soul. So yeah, so you're you're sort of meet, meeting new people, aren't you? Really, when you're reading, so and making friends with some of them at least, um, depending on what. I have of plenty of friends. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they are dead, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, oh, well, that's great. That's lovely. So, well, I hope that for, for our viewers, I hope anyone who wasn't already convinced that, that reading books is a great pleasure and also a great sort of educational, has an ed educational element as well. Um, I hope we've help to convince you all and do encourage you to to read uh, read books uh, read newspapers read things on the internet just read really it's very important to read a language as well as to speak it um so um so i i'd like to thank my my guests very much indeed for all for being here today and for all your fascinating input into into our discussion uh, thank you very much uh, so and also just to remind people again um, if if you'd like to see a few more videos about book book reading reading books have a look at alex's ingvid channel with uh, several uh, Lord of the Rings, I think, is one of them. Um, Alice in Wonderland is another. So Alex's videos on various books. There we are. There's Alice in Wonderland. Good. And then if you're if you're learning Spanish or if you're interested in learning Spanish, have a look at Anna's Butterfly Spanish channel um, as well. And... Um, also, um, I have a few other videos in this kind of interview type series where I've been interviewing other people previously, some of my students and more recently someone who works for a charity. So there are various interviews on my channel that you might be interested in watching. Thanks again to everyone for taking part. Lovely to be in touch with people from from Canada and Mexico and Manchester, UK and London, UK. Uh, we've all come together 
today to do this. Uh, it's been fun to do. Thank you. So that's the end of today's session then. So I hope um, you've all enjoyed watching. Thank you for, for coming and uh, I hope to see you all again soon. So let's all wave to the viewers and all the best with your reading. Thank you. Bye for now. See you soon. You. Bye. Bye.